started. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Libby Spencer and I'm the sales manager at Inartis USA. As most of you know, Inartis USA is the largest supplier of premium winemaking products in the world and we're so happy to serve you as customers. When we updated our logo a couple of years ago, we added the byline inspiring innovation. And that idea has really permeated how we approach these webinars moving forward. And it's something that we hope to accomplish in this webinar. The program today is designed to introduce a company to the US market, a company called WineGrid. WineGrid is a Portuguese company that specializes in remote monitoring systems for wineries. I know a lot of you know our CEO and technical director, Jose Santos, who I'm hoping has connected. Hello, Jose. And most of you know, if you know Jose, you know he's Portuguese. He brings it up every chance he gets. Jose know, knew that WineGrid was eager to enter the US market and an introduction was made. Now this webinar is a little bit different than what we normally do because we don't sell wine grid solutions and we don't have a proper business relationship with them. But we think that their solutions do truly inspire innovation and we want them to have a successful launch in the US by introducing them to some of our winemaking customers and friends. And we think the winemakers in the US will be interested to learn about this technology, particularly because remote monitoring is, as we've seen in recent vintages, I think there's a strong application throughout California. So before I introduce the speakers, just a couple of notes. If you have questions about connectivity, please feel free to use the chat box. If you find the chat box distracting, of course, you can minimize it from your screen. And we will monitor the chat for questions and we won't answer them real time, but they'll be posted in the Q&A section at the end and we'll be able to answer your questions all at once. Okay, so WineGrid has put together a great program that features three speakers. In a previous meeting, they were teasing me about how poorly I pronounced their names. So I asked Jose to coach me and hopefully I don't embarrass myself and I don't dishonor their family. So I'll try my best. Please forgive me. So first we have Rogerio Nugera, who is the CEO and has his PhD in physics. And he is going to tell you about wine grid, of course, and then we'll share the importance of monitoring wine and must throughout the winemaking process and the benefits of doing that remotely. Then we have Sergio Pureira, who is a well-known Portuguese winemaker. And I forgot to ask Jose how to say the name of the winery. So I'm going to skip that detail, but hopefully he'll mention it. And he uses wine grid in his winery and will share his real practical experience. And then finally, we have Miguel Pedroza, who is an assistant professor of enology at California State Fresno. And he'll discuss the impact of having access to reliable and precise monitoring on winemaking processes and decision-making. So before I turn it over to Rogerio, I want to state my objective very clearly, which is to help the nice people at WineGrid launch their business here in the US. And so by the end of this webinar, if you are interested in learning more, or if you're interested in having any sensors installed into one or more of your tanks, you can contact me directly and I will be happy to connect you with the right person at WineGrid. For me, if we can find three to five wineries that are willing to try this technology during harvest, I will consider that a successful, a successful event. So I will stop talking and we'll turn this over to Rogerio. Are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Hello. Uh, Wonderful. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. It's working. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Libby, for the very nice introduction. You pronounce very well the name, so you are, you are, you can be uh, Portuguese. Uh, you can be a full Portuguese speaker uh, very soon. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you to an artist for providing this opportunity to present and to all the. the the people present here and also i'd like to thank you also a special uh, to thank to jose i'm not sure if he's here on this webinar but it's it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, in this event uh, with an artist so i'm going to share my screen let me check if you can see it just one moment 
Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes? Okay. Miguel is saying yes. Okay, good. So, um, so we went through it. Uh, as I said, uh, we, as Olivia said, so we, we have a mission to, to digitize the full process of white making. So we want to bring the digital uh, seller to the world. Okay. So yeah, we have specialized over the last years in the uh, technological solutions to digitize the full process of wine making. So we have a team of, ex of people around the, uh, around the world and in different, uh, with different skills that can help winemakers to, to achieve their best uh, results. Um, this is a quick overview of the company. So we have installations uh, worldwide in uh, Portugal, uh, Spain, Italy, USA, Israel, France, Australia, New Zealand, Chile. Um, so, and we are growing every year, so hopefully we will uh, have uh, more, uh, more um, installations here in the US and uh, that can help uh, Americans uh, in, uh, in producing the wine. So, um, this is some of our uh, customers uh, that we have, uh, and Igal you know well. Uh, also from Chateau Margot, for example, Pernod Ricard, and we also have Spurão that is here and presenting. So this is some of our customers that we have uh, worldwide. But the reason I'm here is uh, you don't want to know what are our customers. Uh, let's first let's go first to the to the question that uh, that uh, I'm trying to to, to answer here is uh, why is it important to to monitor um, critical process like uh, wine making for example so let's uh, first think uh, I, I was thinking about how to put uh, visualize the way we could think how this is important and when i was driving my car i i thought about this so suppose that you are driving your car okay and this is a straight ahead uh, road so uh, highway with uh, just you know that you don't have any curves in, in front of you so uh, you know exactly what is in front of you so my question to you is the following would you dare to drive with your uh, eyes uh, closed does anyone will dare to do that uh, because you know the road right you know how the road is would you dare to do that to, okay and i just i have to put my I just have to go in front. I don't need to do anything. I know exactly what is going to happen. Would you dare to do that? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. Uh, but you could do another way. Let's say, okay, no, I'm for sure I'm not going to drive with my eyes blind, but I will open my eyes every now and then. Something like this. I close my eyes, I open, close again, open again, close, open would you do that miguel i'm looking at you would you dare to drive like that you close your eyes and you open close but in the road like this you could try right? for a few seconds maybe but for sure this is not the way uh, the, the the roads look like sometimes we have roads like this and uh, you are you are not going to dare to to blind your eyes uh, even for a few seconds and sometimes you have some unpredictable issues in front of you. So it's not a good idea that uh, even if you know very well your road, if you know very well your process, that you don't uh, see every time what you are doing. Okay, so you are you see where I'm going to with this uh, with this uh, approach, and uh, and uh, so this is the kind of. Um, of issue that you can get if you are you when you have a critical process but let's look to a critical process in winemaking some of you uh, that uh, are involved in winemaking uh, for example in fermentation knows uh, a piece of paper like this so this is the equivalent of uh, opening and closing your eyes when you are doing the fermentation so this is a, a registered piece of paper when where the winemaker takes the information about the density. In Europe, is, we use density, and in some places and in other places, sometimes we use BOME, as it is uh, very uh, also used in, uh, in the US. And, uh, um, but still, this is a process that uh, it works, okay, so you can uh, control the process, 
but you have uh, between measurements you don't see what, what what's happening so it's as i said again it's the equivalent of driving with uh, closing your eyes every now and then and uh, this is not uh, the optimized way of doing that there are better better ways of monitoring your uh, winemaking processes so uh, basically what uh, we are trying to say is that we want to move for something like this from this piece of paper to a full uh, digitized solution okay uh, where you can see instead of taking notes and data in a piece of paper you see everything uh, in a, here anywhere in the world so you can see your uh, uh, you can actually control your process okay but uh, uh, it's not only uh, it's not only uh, like uh, uh, it's not only this that uh, that impacts. So uh, the idea is that you can have a full digitized solution for all of uh, okay, wait, sorry, for uh, different processes. So I was I was talking about fermentation, but uh, ideally in a full digitized cellar, you we want we want to have a digitized pressing, a digitized fermentation, or even a digitized maturation where you can see all data in one place. But it's not only about seeing your data. It's not only about the triggering alarms. It's when you have a digitized solution, you can have other, other solutions. You can, you can start to use uh, advanced algorithms. Okay? For example, last year we launched a, a new very, uh, it was a, a, an artificial intelligence algorithm that could detect automatically certain events for the fermentation, for example. Uh, for example, you can uh, uh, detect a stuck fermentation, which is uh, quite important to be detected on time. Okay, So this is the kind of activities that you can start to have when you have a full digitized solution. But let's not just talk about uh, this. Let's see some examples of what we, uh, like the harvest 2020, the last harvest we got, um, a few months ago. Uh, one thing which is important first is to check how reliable you are. If you want to digitize something, if you want to digitize a certain process, you want to use sensors, but you have to trust your sensors. You have to trust how well will they work, because if you don't trust them, you cannot act based on that. So, um, so uh, and this, uh, this we, we compare here, the, the accuracy of the, the, the data registered from the sensors with the, the manual data. And as you can see, it's really uh, on the, uh, quite accurate. It's the same, the same measurements. So this is uh, the starting point of, uh, of trust that you need to have with the, the, the measurements that you, that you do. So, uh, and here it start to, uh, we start to have some fun with the data. Uh, for example, uh, here we see um, a fermentation uh, data from a, a red line, where you can see uh, this line is the, the evolution of the sugar content. Okay, and you can see also the evolution, and this is uh, the information about the kinetics, for example. And you see an increase of the kinetics, then it stays more or less on the same value, then it is a decrease when it's, it's the end of the fermentation. So we can always use this information to automatic trigger some events. And uh, with this uh, solution, you, you can also see the volume. In, in this specific case, the volume is always constant. But you can also, can also trigger uh, events and detect if there is some, um, from the traceability purposes, for example, um, if you do some kind of blend, uh, you will have influence on the volume, so you can know exactly what's what's going to to uh, what is happening in your in your system. But uh, th that is more than we can get from this information. Uh, let's look uh, here. I put uh, all of data at the same time. For sure, it's a bit confusing, but it's to show uh, a superimposition of the data so you can see what uh, we are talking about. So this uh, blue line is uh, the evolution of the sugar content, the, the density. Um, in, uh, in, uh, in green, you, you, we have the liquid level, okay? 
Uh, this line is the, 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 the cinetics, the kinetics of fermentation, and this is the temperature. Okay. So let's look uh, what, what happened here. As you can see, at a certain point, the kinetics started to reduce. So uh, this means that the fermentation was going to, to stop soon. Uh, so there was an issue with the, with, with the process that was detected because you can actually see immediately that there is a decrease of fermentation and uh, uh, kinetics. So what did the winemakers uh, did uh, increase the temperature, the setting point. So by increasing temperature, he, he was able to, after a certain point, to increase again the kinetics of fermentation. But again, that, that was again um, an issue with the, with the kinetics. So there was a, a need again to increase again the, um, the, the setting point so you can also uh, can increase uh, the kinetics. Um, so uh, because there was a real-time measurement of the process, the winemaker could react uh, in time to avoid any uh, issue and correct immediately the process. So you can see that the, uh, the, the fermentation, there is some fluctuations here because there was uh, some issues that was uh, that appeared, but uh, it was able to to, uh, to detect in time and to and to correct the process. Uh, so it was a proactive um, uh, process instead of a reactive. If you have if the fermentation has, was stuck at certain point, um, here is just to show that, for example, at the end of fermentation. You can see that the, uh, there was a setting point to 28 to 27 degrees to, uh, to, for the degradation of the residual sugars that were still there. So as you can see, everything stays traced in, in, in terms of the traceability of uh, the processes. So, um, and uh, this is the, the key aspect, is when you start to, to be proactive in terms of detecting and to protect all of the organoleptic uh, qualities that you might have, and uh, this will help your decision-making uh, mechanisms that you that you might have. Uh, this is another example of uh, uh, of a, a process of a winemaker that is making port wine. So, as you might know, uh, in port wine, uh, you don't uh, go until the end of fermentation. You stop the fermentation at a certain point, so you still keep some sugars. And at that point, where you stop the fermentation is very critical. So you have to stop it at the right point. And uh, at this time, the winemaker put a threshold, an alarm, at a certain uh, a uh, certain sugar content, in order to, when fermentation arrives to a certain point, you should stop the fermentation. Okay. So, so that's the kind of of, uh, of information that you that you can have that you can do that you can use to control better um, your processes. So, um, so let's move on to uh, another, uh, another example. Um, here it's uh, ex an example of fermentation barrels. So it's not only in tanks, uh, you can also do it on barrels. And here you see a very nice curve of, of fermentation uh using uh, this is a new sense that we have a battery uh, operated that you can put on the barrel and uh, that you can do a fermentation uh, monitor the full process of fermentation and this avoids that you have to go barrel by barrel taking a sample as you as in the same as in the, in the tanks that you need to go barrel by barrel tank by tank taking a sample of wine registering a piece of paper and uh, then uh, knowing what to do so everything stays uh, fully automatic and in terms of traceability. Uh, but it's not only on barrels that we that we can have uh, uh, digitalization of the fermentation. Um, for example, in the uh, when you are doing the, the champagne, the typical champagne method, uh, there is the second fermentation that happens in the in the bottle. And here you can see uh, uh, with this device that we put on the bottle, you can detect, you can uh, monitor the full process of the, the second fermentation. And, um, and there are many things that you can take from here. First of all, first of all, in terms of traceability, we can detect if someone has moved the, the, the bottle. 
So uh, this sensor automatically detects if someone is moving in the bottle or if someone is speaking there. So you see at some point of time, someone moved the, the, the bottle here. And uh, you can also see that there is this uh, increase of pressure due to situ formation. So this is a good sign that the fermentation is going on. But you can also see other, uh, you can also get other information. Here you can see um, that there was a small uh, temperature change uh, in, the, in the room where the bottle was. And you can see the effect of that temperature change. Uh, there was a decrease of temperature and immediately impacted on the kinetics fermentation, as you can see. So this is uh, this gives a very important uh, information about what's what has to be done and what kind of control you you have to have uh, in your processes in order to um, and by, with this information, one maker can actually know exactly how is the fermentation going uh, on uh, with time and the impact at temperature, for example, in this case as in the in the process and uh here it's at the end it's we have some just information that you have from the change of bottle uh, at some point of time so uh but it's not only in fermentation for example in maturation it's also uh, a point where uh, you need uh, it's it's important to have a good monitoring of the process of maturation uh, as you know when you're in maturation in in a, in, a, in barrels uh, you have to uh, very often go to the to the barrel and uh, take the bang out and look inside and check the, the level if uh, if there is no absorption of the wine um, uh, that decreases the level uh, because the wooden barrels, especially if they are new uh, barrels, uh, they will absorb a, a, a large quantity of wine. And uh, uh, the problem is that uh, there is a relations. Uh, direct relation between the, the height of the, the, the space uh, with the, the, the quantity of oxygen. And that quantity of oxygen will uh, induce uh, axectobacters, vertomyces, and uh, this kind of issues that you don't want to have in your wine. So it is critically important to, to monitor that. So uh, this is an example of uh, with this kind of sensors, you put those, those sensors in the barrel, and you can see the evolution of the of the of the level with time. In this case, for example, here you can see um, the, the distance of liquid. So the lower means that the level is higher. Okay. So if uh, when it increases, means that you are getting more and more air inside your barrel. So you don't want that. And uh, here it's the temperature in, in red. And um, as you can see, um, it, for example, here the winemaker set a threshold at 10 millimeters. So after 10 millimeters of decrease, he wants to do something, some actions. That's the kind of activities that you can do. But uh, here you can see also in terms of traceability what is happening. Um, here you have a short racking. Okay. So this, uh, what happened is that the winemaker took a small portion of wine to top other barrels. Okay, so there was a short racking here at this point. And, the, and, I, and you can see the handling, so you can see that the, uh, it, in fact, was moved. So that there was an operation that was done on this barrel. And again, you see another operation. So this is an handling that was done, another operation. And in this case, you see that uh, the, the level increases to the top. So it was the process of topping, uh, topping up. So, uh, um, and the advantage of this process is that uh, instead of doing uh, different checks, because the winemaker before having this would check every few days. So first check, second check, third check, and fourth check. So all of these checks means that you need to open, take, a, take, a, take your bank, and then uh, see what's happening there. And, and uh, every time you open to, to see the level, you are increasing the amount of oxygen inside your barrel. So you want to avoid, you want to reduce to the minimum the number of, of uh, analysis of uh, checks that you have to do in your barrel. So by having uh, this kind of sensor of monitoring, we don't need to do that. You just go there if you want to do the, 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 the racking or the topping, okay? So this is the kind of advantage that you can have 
uh, and the, in terms of traceability and the better uh, management of SO2 and uh, with a reduction of wine exposure to oxygen. And, uh, uh, but there are other things that you can do. You can also track the, the, the volume, the storage volume. So with sense you can, you can track uh, when you are filling a tank, when you are, when uh, you to know exactly um, the blend, for example, how much you are going to blend, how much volume you want to add to a certain, to a certain tank, or you want to, to even to, um, to, uh, to know exactly how, how much nutrition you should give to your uh, to your uh, fermentation process based on the volume of uh, wine that you have so there are many uh, options that you can have uh, by digitizing all of this uh, but it's not only on wine you can also have in spirits okay uh, in spirits for example uh, you uh, when you are storing your uh, in aging your uh, spirits, whether, whether it is cognac or uh, bourbon or whatever that you can have in a barrel, um, you, you, can, uh, you can detect, um, you can monitor the evolution of alcohol content inside uh, your, your uh, uh, barrel. Okay, the alcohol, the, the level and the temperature. So this is the kind of information that uh, you always, uh, that is interesting to have in real time. So, uh, to finalize, uh, I'm going ahead of my, I'm going uh, ready in 30 minutes, so I'm going to speed up the process. So, and uh, finally, the last uh, stage that we are digitizing is pressing. So in pressing, uh, the information about, about the color and about the turbidity can lead to optimization of the color extraction and, for example, selection of the better uh, grapes. Okay, uh, selection of wine based on the clarity of the wine, on the turbidity. And uh, with this kind of sense that we have that measures in real time turbidity and color, you can have um, uh, real time uh, measurement and the difference how the color uh, goes, uh, changes with time. For example, here you can see for every cycle of press, you can see that, that, that the, the color intensity is increasing. So you can only stop the pressing when you, you reach a certain color intensity, okay? The same happens for uh, turbidity. So you can use uh, this kind of information to select when uh, uh, more, more uh, a, certain, a certain juice uh, with less uh, turbidity. And uh, the results that we got, for example, shows that uh, this kind of measurement, it's independent of the type of grape. So in this case, we had Chardonnay, uh, two different types of grape, and uh, the, the same results were there. So uh, to conclude, uh, digitizing the process of winemaking uh, brings different advantages for different process. For example, if you are in the press, as I said, you can optimize, you can separate juices according to their clarity and quality. You can optimize extraction of coloring pigments, uh, or you can even visualize the color you that you are extracting during the process. But for fermentation, for example, you can improve uh, the prof your profitability, you can, you can save your time. So you don't need to go tank by tank to take uh, data, so you can use your own resources to better application. Um, and and the, there is a lack, the, the, there is a full uh, breed of, of, um, of solutions, of activities that you can do when you have a digitized solution of your uh, winemaking process. And finally, in the maturation, we also uh, you can uh, prevent the development of microorganisms uh, or uh, optimizing uh, having a better time management, uh, for example, in the process devoted to topping up. So uh, thank you uh, to all of you for your time. And uh, I'm also available for questions if you, if you need. Thank you, that was fantastic. It's amazing how much data you can gather and I appreciate you sharing the decision-making points along the way so it's practical, that's great. Thank so you. next we have Sergio, are you there? You can hear us? Yes. Oh, fantastic, look at you. Okay, I will go away. 
<laughs> okay, let me just pull my my presentation first. I can see that. Okay, okay, there we go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sergio Pereira. I work at Spron. I'm Chief Information Officer uh, at Spron. And, and today uh, I was asked to talk about a little uh, on our vision, on digital vision, and how we see things going forward. And so I have here some, just, just one second to show you and and, and first uh, about our company we we are a 40 plus year old winery in portugal we, we make wines and olive oils and also we, we do uh, some craft beers also and we have a mission that uh, you can see here we we do have some biological wines and we do produce our our products and buy also grapes and olives uh, so we have like a vertical operation and we distribute around all the world. So you can see here some of our cells. I, I bring you today our pre-COVID cells uh, from 19. Okay, but we are not far. Okay, COVID was not nice to us, but not really that that, that worst also. So we, we, we are in Brazil, in Portugal, obviously. In Brazil, it's a really important market to us. We are also in the United States and all across Europe, also some countries in Asia. Uh, so we have uh, a nice presence. We, we also export more than half of our production out of Portugal. Um, okay, I, I'll jump about uh, on this one on our on our plans and uh, our figures, and I uh, will go straight to uh, what we see as our main challenge and what brings us today here to talk with, with you guys. So we, we do in terms of operations, we have a vertical operation. So we, we, we do have some agriculture. We also contract um, several growers that, that do grapes and olives along our, our, our own production. We then transform those on, on wine and on olive oil. We also do our own bottling and packaging and the, the supply management is also done by us or for or, uh, some cases like brazil for example where we we own a distribution company uh, or in portugal so we have a lot of operations on, on those fields and w when we look at operational sharing but what we we feel the most is how do we grow what do we grow how do we we extract our product from from, from these grow growers from grapes from olives and and on the packaging so it's like uh, we have a lot of challenge here i will talk to today a little about the growing how do how do we see growing and the extraction process so have a long harvest informations etc um so on agricultural side what we found or what we think will be the most important is that we can see each, each plant that we own as a member of our production or as a member almost like a member of our community besides our, our people and we like to know each and one of these plants so what we are trying to build is system uh, with technology and with, with management with people on the field that can um, like optimize each of these plants we have several challenges there and we are building several places um, I can show you here some some of the tools that we are developing and uh, and have in place already like for example we track each each um, each production on the field. Every time this, for example, you are here, here is a map of our production uh, that was harvested manually with, with works on the field that pinpoint each each uh, basket of, of grapes. And we use it to, to know how is the, the production done. And 
in each plant how much we are producing. This is really great when we start to cross it with the other information that we have, like for example, drone flights that we do, satellite imaging that we collect also, and we do it all on, on one tool where we try to, to keep that information stacked and ready for projects you know, on algorithm and intelligence, artificial intelligence and data analytics uh, that we are doing. So we have also on our agricultural team um, several people that, that are typically on IT teams. Uh, there's, for example, a senior pro uh, programmer that maintains all these information and systems. So they are quite prepared to, to deal with this complexity. I also have here to show you the, the, the kind of data that we are collecting. And this came from flights, but you, you can see, for example, on this one, on, on the top right, uh, we start to individualize each plant. So from here, we, we, we get things like volumetry, uh, et cetera, a, a lot of information that we are processing. And we start to know on, on each on, on each uh, field parcel uh, what kind of plants we have there, where the plants are developing or not, um, the kind of, of impacts that our activities have in there, etc. Also, um, going going forward here, um, we we register every um, activity we are doing on, on the farm. So we have all our machinery um, connected and with, with sensors like GPS and such also with, with information where the driver can input all, all the, the, the operations he's doing but also the the teams on the field um, that are doing field operations they also collect information and and keep keep this all, all this information collected on, on our system so we have millions of data points on what we are doing on each of of the fields and we can see did we lose him well it appears he is dropped off the webinar. So I can stall for a short period of time and see if he logs back in. And if not, we will transition to the next speaker. But if we can all just hang tight for a moment, or if we wait a minute, if anyone has questions, you want to pop into the chat box, we could address a question or two potentially. The router at my house is located in one of my children's rooms. Oh, here he is. He's coming back. And every now and again, it gets kicked over in the middle of an important meeting. So I have fears that these things occur, but there he oh. is. Here, I am back. I don't know where I left off. <laughs> We've, you've only been gone for one minute. One minute. Okay. Okay. So I was talking. 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I was talking about our automated machinery here on how we, we collect information on our field field operationals and how we use it to, to try and make models on the production we will have or the necessities of our field. So what we do believe and to to make to make here a, a, a quick point is that we need a lot of information to 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 take our decisions and and plannings to the next level so what we are doing here is like extracting everything we can and closing it on on, on systems uh, so we can leverage it on the, on the next level using those points those data points as as um, uh, a starting point for new projects we are starting a new one, for example, uh, this year, 
where we are using this information to to and with machine learn learning to 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 learn how to predict the the, the production we will have on each of these fields okay so let's see next um, we, we have a lot of, of, of wineries also and uh, craft beer, as I told you. And I, I would like to, to, to share here with you some of our, of our challenge and how we are facing them and trying to solve some of these challenges. Um, one, one of those is planning the artist. And when we do start planning it, there's a lot of of things we we need to to balance together uh, one of those is how what's our capacity on wine making for example and that links obviously to to the physical conditions or many recipients we have but but also to the the control of those fermentations and how we, we can leverage on those uh, also, very important, the, the, the timing of, of those harvesting, uh, of course, so we need to be very careful and manage those together with our partners we, and suppliers. And so what, what we do is, given a certain demand um, on what we, 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 we think we will need on, on the market the next year, we try to... Um, to plan our harvesting around that and having that as a, a main figure. So we, we typically try to uh, make a bullseye for the production level we have. Uh, we, we see, for example, if we need to buy more grapes or not. And we also try to maximize certain parameters depending on the type of wine that we will need. So that's the main challenge that, that we have during the harvesting. And we are using some systems to, to help us. And I, I will show now one of our, our schematics of one of our wineries. Uh, sorry for Portuguese here, but, but it's used by, by Portuguese team. And um, what we are trying to do is using some, some sensors like when we uh, presented before, we try to uh, control our fermentations and have not only uh, um, a controlled process, but also a forecast on, on when that process will end. Uh, we think with that, for example, we can achieve like five or ten percent more use and on the rotation of the recipients. So increasing, for example, the, the grapes you can we can receive on a daily basis. That's one of, of the things we do. Of course, there is a lot of other things that that can be done here, and uh, and even the quality of, of all the process and, and the resulting wine is leveraged here. When, it, when we think, for example, that the, the, the control of the fermentation not being done by, let's say, like every six hours or 12 hours, uh, it really permits to be quicker on adjusting the fermentation or even ending it. Okay, so leveraging even more our capacity. Uh, that that can can be when when we look at the company and think we want to increase our sales, and so we need to increase our production. That that can be the difference between having to invest on on more machinery or, or not to 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 be able to to do the buying we need to to for our customers. Here I have um, um, a fermentation control sample uh, to show you. Uh, Rogerio already showed you graphs like, uh, like these. We, we use it a lot. Uh, we are also trying to, to, to use this on, uh, with machine learning. So that's, that's a new prospect that we are uh, trying to, to see if it works. And if those those uh, alarms and those forecastings really can help us uh, achieving achieving those those higher levels of productivity on on the winery, and to close it, um, here is our, uh, our we are structuring our approach, and so it's. There's a lot of components here. Um, we we talk a lot about fermentation, for example, um, 
but there's uh, other other instruments here and other equipments that we need to to get together and we are working on all these equipments and trying to bring them together on our platform so this this kind of sensors that that bring us information and then really step up on, on the information capture are really important to get the most out of, of this type of systems and to increase our productivity and quality of, of our wine. So we are using these together uh, as a means to, to increase our efficiency and our quality of our, our, our products. Okay, uh, I think I've been very brief, but feel free to, to ask any questions that, that you see necessary or want to clarify. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that. I know I'm supposed to wait until the end to ask questions, but I'm hosting so I can do whatever I want. But I wanted to ask you, when did you make this transition in your winery to to automize? How long have you been operating this way? It's, it's ongoing. Uh, I've been uh, working for, for, for Spurão for 15 years. And it, it, it's like a cake where you're going to heat by slices and, and not the whole cake. So it's a journey, definitely. Okay. But when you started 15 years ago... Yeah, uh, the, the things were... A lot of blocks were not there uh, working. And that vision that I, I've shown on the, last, on the last slide, it's not fully yet implemented also. Okay, so uh, I, I'll say like, for example, the, the information capture we are trying to, to make, we are like 30% maybe. Okay, okay. That, that, that's a whole figure of, of the plan. That's good, I think, for some of our audience members to hear that, and I like your analogy of the cake because it takes time yes. to implement these systems and you start somewhere and grow. We don't yes. have to have it all figured out all the time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So our final speaker, I've got Miguel Pedrosa. Can you hear us, Miguel? Yes, I can. Oh, and I can hear you too. And do you have a, a presentation you're going to share? I do have a few slides. Beautiful, I can see them. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I first want to thank uh, Rogerio, uh, Winegrid, and uh, an artist for allowing me to, to speak. And certainly I want to thank the attendees for, um, for being here to, uh, this morning. And um, as a start point, I just wanted to um, uh, point out that uh, one of the things that uh, this type of technology is, uh, is offering, as Rogerio was uh, showing us in his first, uh, in his first slides, is that possibility of uh, uh, looking at pieces of time that we have missed. And, uh, and that, of course, opens um, the possibility to, to advance our understanding of uh, processes from the vineyard, as uh, Sergio was uh, showing, all the way to um, bottled wine, uh, even uh, wastewater effluents. So it's um, the the Internet of Things, and uh, having this stream of information uh, in more and more devices, I think, uh, is going to be one of the, the revolutions in the in the wine industry. It's certainly happening in many other industrial sectors and the wine industry will not be uh, the, uh, the will not be left behind. And uh, I think uh, the fact that the technology is uh, more and more available nowadays, uh, the number of IOT devices that are available for, for different applications is growing. And uh, this, again, opens that possibility to, to open our eyes or to look into uh, smaller details that can help uh, uh, wineries and winemakers to, to advance understanding of uh, different processes. And uh, probably uh, don't want to repeat things that uh, have been already said, but uh, 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 Rogerio and, and Sergio uh, made a, an outstanding job in describing the process. 
And uh, one of the things that I just wanted to share is uh, the basic approach that we are trying to follow at uh, Fresno State. I first met uh, Rogerio uh, two years ago. He he gave uh, he was on a tour in the U.S. and uh, he was uh, kind enough to to allow us to test some of uh, their technology, some of their sensors. And we use it to compare two fermentations, a uh, wild yeast fermentation versus an inoculated uh, fermentation with my, uh, with my students, with my undergrad students. And uh, so the process uh, of uh, capturing the data first uh, from the sensors and having a direct stream of uh, the date from data collection to the network or the cloud-based uh, software that would later inform us about what was going on. It really prompted a lot of interesting discussions with uh, the students about the efficiency of the process. And, uh, and those discussions, as uh, Sergio was uh, pointing out, are, I think, important to define what, what type of profiles can be adapted to specific wine styles. To, there are certainly a lot of things that can uh, become standardized in, uh, in winemaking processes. And uh, those discussions with, uh, with the technical team, with the management team can be built into these learning models. And as you accumulate data over time, can later facilitate that process automation. And uh, that uh, I think that process, what uh, one of the things that uh, this uh, new technology is offering is uh, democratization of uh, or accessing for a wider audience, uh, uh, more diverse wineries to this type of technology can help in uh, streamlining this uh, this uh, this type of uh, workflow. So uh, maybe I know for for a fact that uh, many of uh, the big wineries in California have been working with Internet of Things and uh, sensors for already a few years. And uh, but I think. Once this start, technology starts permeating as well to medium size and even small size wineries, uh, this offers an opportunity to again to understand those uh, those those changes in wine that are happening maybe in uh, in, period, in during that closing your eyes and uh, character uh, to help to characterize uh, processes. So some some of the uh, perspectives that I see in the short and medium term for winemaking is that uh, what we are seeing is that the technology is uh, becoming very trustworthy. We have reliable sensors that pair well with uh, ground truth studies, um, approaching uh, uh, good parameters in terms of limited limits of detection or quantification. The um, I think the, the wine industry will uh, continue to ask for demonstrations and, and this va process validation in different matrix effect uh, or to, to evaluate matrix effect in different styles of wine, different, uh, different types of processes and uh, different, uh, uh, different tanks, for example. And uh, the more this uh, technology is user friendly, uh, allows for installation that can be um, moved from tank to tank, for example, or from different barrels that can uh, um, certainly help wineries to address this, uh, these challenges of being more competitive and to identify any deviation from process specification early enough so that uh, uh, the final outcome adheres to whatever the winemaker is uh, is uh, is targeting and uh, again this uh, I, I I think that all of the this flow of information that is arriving from uh, vineyard and that can 
I, I believe can be translated all the way to the taster, this vineyard to taster traceability. Um, the fact of having all this, uh, the, the information collected in the cloud where you can establish correlations with your process parameters and uh, what is uh, the link between um, maybe acceptance or ratings of uh, tasters and being able to integrate that information with inform uh, with uh, uh, viticultural parameters or cross pad uh, maceration profiles, fermentation profiles for primary and secondary fermentation. All of this is uh, is it's already here. It's already happening as. Uh, as Sergio was uh, showing what uh, Sporao is doing. So I, I just uh, think that uh, we have a very um, exciting uh, days ahead of us in terms of uh, what we are going to see once we stop doing this uh, thing that uh, um, uh, Rogerio was uh, was mentioning at the beginning, so it's uh, it's certainly exciting to 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 have access to this technology and to be able to incorporate uh, or to participate of this uh, of this movement that uh, started already in in bigger wineries uh, some time ago, but uh, hopefully now it's uh, available for for medium size and small size wineries. So um, since again, since they they already did a, 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 an excellent job in uh, in um, describing the process, but um, I we are planning some uh, testing with uh, uh, with wine grid sensors this uh, this summer. So we are I'm sorry this uh, this harvest season. So I I do hope to to continue to expand my understanding of what we can do, what we can see, and uh, hopefully share some results of uh, those trials uh, soon with you guys. Thank you so much. I, I think the point has been clearly made, which is there's a lot of great information that we can gather using these automated systems. And I think there's going to only be an increased expectation of having information available as millennials become decision makers, this is a generation that is used to having information available anytime they want it. So I certainly expect that we'll move in that direction. So thank you all for making it obvious what information we can gather and what to do with that information. I, one of the things I found most compelling about WineGrid is a couple of things. One is basically eliminating the need to take bricks and tents throughout harvest, being able to monitor headspace of your barrels. It, it offers a lot of practical advantages, but since I work in sales, the most compelling part to me is that the pricing is really attractive and manageable in my opinion. So as I mentioned, an artist will not be the distributor of these devices, but I'm happy to put anyone in touch with the folks at WineGrid. But the installation of the probe and the pricing is I expect more reasonable than you think it might be. So um, with that, I wanna thank everybody for being here. We're here for questions. And if anybody has questions now, we're happy to take them. I see someone typing. I'm just gonna wait a moment, I see, dot, dot, dot. All right. I see typing, be patient with me. Okay, well, I will move on. But thank you so much to our speakers. 
I Oh, so the question here is the temperature sensor, I assume it doesn't have to be submerged in the wine for it to give readings. Would the temperature sensor need to be in, submerged? Well, the, well, I'm not sure which, which temperature sensor is he uh, talking about. So uh, our uh, sensor, for example, for fermentation, uh, it's in contact with the wine. So it's uh, inserted and in contact with the wine. So it measures the, um, the density, the Baume level, and the temperature. Uh, for the barrels, it also is in contact with the wine. It's always good to be in contact with the wine if you want to measure the temperature of the wine. Um, other approaches do not give an accurate uh, result. So I can say that uh, all of them are in contact with the wine. Thank you. And it looks like another question might be coming. Oh, okay, great. All right, that person stopped typing, so I'll be done with that. Thank you to everyone for joining us. I appreciate our speakers so much. Thank you for joining us into your evening. I hope you all go. One question, uh, sorry, Olivia, oh. I think we have one question. Sorry to interrupt yeah, you. Right. <laughs> Uh, the question is, can you integrate the data to the receivability software like uh, uh, Vintrace? Yes, you can. Actually, we are in contact with uh, uh, with Vintrace, uh, with them. So you, you will be able to to integrate with most of the software uh, approaches. So that, that can be done. Uh, all, uh, our winemakers that uh, use our systems already integrate with their own software. So the data is automatically sent to their uh, management software. Wonderful. Okay, now I will try to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to all of you for joining us, to our guests and to our speakers. We're grateful for you sharing this innovative technology and we hope that it takes off. I know it's been a great success throughout Europe and other parts of the world and we hope you have the same success here in the US. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a beautiful evening or day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Miguel and Cesar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.